Now that we've broken down the image into distinct layers and any blocked or occluded objects have been patched up or painted back in, we're ready to model from the photo. The key here is to use the original photo as a guide to make sure that we're positioning all of our objects correctly in 3D space. First we'll set up the units in 3ds Max so we can model our objects in real world measurements. Then we'll adjust our viewport settings to make our modeling job a little bit easier. We'll use the perspective match utility to align and match our camera in 3D to the camera that was used to take the original photo. Then we'll build the background layer and jet engine model using sub-object modeling techniques. Well, before we start the project, we want to make sure that 3ds Max's file structure is set. So if you haven't set the file structure yet, go to Max dropdown, Manage, and we can set our project folder. And that'll uh, create one folder that has all the subfolders needed for the project. Mine's already set, so I don't need to do it here. Now I want to make sure that my units are set to the correct size. So I go up to Customize, Units, Setup, and make sure that I'm in uh, US Standard for me. If you understand metric, go that route. But everything will be measured in this project uh, with US Standard. I do the default inches, meaning that if I do a drop down, I type in 20, it'll come up as 20 inches. If I type in 20 and I have default units as feet, it'll come up as 20 feet. So I'm going to do everything in inches. It's kind of what I understand. The fractional inches, I go down to 1 100th, which I don't really use anything that small. It's just easier for me to kind of eyeball my inches, um, uh, fractional inches this way. Now, because we're going to be camera mapping, we need to make sure that our image background is a high resolution. Uh, the same thing with our texture maps, that we can actually see them in the viewport. Since all the work we're going to be doing, it needs to be viewed in the viewport in real time. So we're going to right click a little plus sign down here and go down to configure viewports. Under display performance, your texture map and your viewport background environment that number needs to be set much higher than the 512 that it's probably set at this point. So I'm going to go with 2048 and 2048, which is the same size as uh, the image itself that we're using. Now, if this turns out to be too slow, I can bring this number down. Uh, but remember that I'm actually bringing down the resolution in the background. So sometimes it can be harder to, to model if our image is too low. So right now I'll keep those at, at 2048 and 2048. The other thing is to remember to hit apply and not just hit OK. So now we're ready to use the perspective match utility. First thing we'll need to do is create a camera inside of the front viewport. Now this only works with a free cam, so pop in a free cam in the front viewport. And I need to set the render settings for the camera to be the exact same aspect ratio and size for all practical purposes to the image that we're going to use in the background and the images that we're using as materials. So while this is a camera, it eventually is turned into a projector. So if we think of it as a projector, it needs to project the exact same shape onto the scene. So we need to change the render settings. So we'll go up to rendering and go to render setup and change these, uh, change these numbers here, the output size to the exact same as the image that we're using as the background and the image size that we're using for the materials. So that's 2048 and 2048. And I'll lock down my image aspect ratio and lock down my pixel aspect ratio. These are kind of key. The reality is right now, this could be anything now that these guys are locked, now that the image aspect ratio is locked and the pixel aspect ratio is locked. Um, if we changed the width or the height, nothing would really happen. It's all about making sure that our aspect ratios are correct. By keeping these exactly the same, it's just easier to keep everything straight in your head. So I'll lock them at uh, 2048. Now you notice that the camera viewport kind of jumped and now it's a perfect square, so that works. I'm going to view through the camera down here in perspective, so I'll select down in perspective and keyboard shortcut C gets me the camera view. I can move the camera back so I can see the grid a little bit. There we go. And control shift Z to zoom extends all. So now we got to put the perspective match utility onto the camera. So under utilities, perspective match, and we select down here. Now, this, this is kind of strange. I'm going to click over here for a second. I need to have my camera selected. I also need to have my um, camera view selected. So I need to select my camera with a left click. I need to select my viewport with a right click. So see how they're both selected? Then when I hit show vanishing lines, my vanishing lines show up. So I'll right click the plus sign here and go to configure viewports. And what I'll do is I'll put in a background. And I'll use a file, and the file I'm going to use is going to be the NASA with uh, the NASA background with the vanishing points that I uh, kept in. 
Okay, I'll apply to active view and hit OK. There we go. Let me widen this for you. So inside the perspective match utility, you'll see that my vanishing lines uh, that are from the perspective match utility match the lines that I had drawn inside of Photoshop. They also match the gizmo down here. So the X, Y, and Z colors are the same. So we're really just matching colors at this point. So now I'm going to throw this into fast forward uh, so you don't have to watch me line up lines uh, as slow as I probably did it. So it's about five times speed, I think. So I'm throwing the lines in there relatively quickly so I can see that the construction grid there is starting to move into place and it's starting to line itself up pretty well with the, what we consider the ground plane to be. I'm going to have to go in and, and zoom in a little bit. So I hit the little plus sign here and go to 2D uh, pan zoom and zoom in to make sure I'm pretty much dead on. Now, I'm uh, lining these up with the... Uh, the lines I made in Photoshop. But if I didn't make these, I could simply find lines in the image that I could line them up with. I just find it easier when demonstrating to have these uh, X, Y, and Z lines available. So now that everything's kind of uh, lined up here, the, the thing I gotta kind of iron out is the fact that, uh, well, it's aligned, it's aligned to what, you know? Nothing's necessarily in the right place for real world modeling. The only point I know, really, in 3D space are where the uh, the Z and the X meet. I know that corner is a pretty important corner because that starts this wall and it starts this wall here. This image was what? I think it was 1949 when it was taken. Um, so a couple things. The guy who took their, or girl I guess, who took the picture uh, ha probably had it up to their eye if they were using what's similar to a 35 millimeter now. Or if they were using like a box camera where you would look down on it, it would be on their chest. So we know the height of the camera is anywhere from, we'll say, four and a half feet to five and a half feet. I'm going to guess, I'm going to split the, the difference and just make this at five feet. So I'm going to take the Z of the camera and move that up to five feet, which is 60 inches. So with my camera there, what I want to do is I want to move it around so that my X, Y, and Z coordinate zero is over here in this view. So I need to watch this view, specifically this area right here, uh, while I'm moving this camera. So notice that I'm only moving in the X and Y coordinate. Uh, I'm not moving up or down at all. Uh, that's kind of key, because all I'm doing is moving it so that the uh, the 0, 0, 0 point in 3D space matches up with my perceived 0, 0, 0 space in the photo. So now that we're all aligned, we're ready to start modeling. 